1 Thessalonians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul, he's writing to the church of Thessalonica. He is speaking to the Thessalonians here out of worry and concern that something might be lacking in the church. To any pastor, they would feel that way as well. Persecution was rising, and he hasn't seen his church for a long time. Because of that, he is concerned if some people might have left and not returned. Some people have gotten colder. Some people who used to preach no longer preach. Some people who have taken care of some things in that church no longer are taking care of some things. Normally, in any church, Bible-believing church you go to, it is uh, natural within two years, you're going to miss one or a couple people. It's natural. So for Paul, he had that same expression as well. He had that same feeling as well. So he was concerned. But oh to joy, nothing lacked. Nothing lacked. When you read at uh, verse 9, For what thanks can we render to God again for you? For all the joy wherewith we joy, for your sakes before our God, night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Picture that, a church that has been on fire, a church that has not lacked. Have you felt like that when you came to this church? And then it wasn't lacking. It was that hymn singing and man, everybody's been thanking the Lord for the hymn singing. Stirred you up. The gratefulness of the musicians who were volunteering and that music changes the whole atmosphere. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord for a bass drummer. Amen? That made a big difference as well. Made a huge difference with people harmonizing, people who gave their amens, people who gave the spirit. And what joy, Paul said at verse 9, right? Verse 9, he said, the joy wherewith we had with you all. Man, do you remember that? time you are without joy and now you attain joy what joy when you receive christ for your salvation and as the song goes heaven came down and glory filled your soul your soul got saved from hell and it's still the blood that can reach the highest star in heaven transformed your life turned your night into day what joy when you got salvation and oh to what joy when you said wait a minute, there's a Bible-believing church near me? There's a Bible-believing church? I know it's quite a drive, but man, at least I can go to one. Wow, there are actually brothers and sisters in Christ that I can find like-minded. Man, they found Bible-believing truth and I can fellowship with them. You remember what it was like out there in this world, in this area? How you have to be careful with words in the workplace. How you have to be choosy around your lost loved ones and even family members and neighbors around you. And then, oh, to joy, it's like the freedom that came down and the Holy Spirit moving when you're talking to brothers and sisters in Christ where you can talk freely about Jesus Christ, what he did for your life. And you can talk freely about the mess of the world, how wicked it is and how wrong it is because you dare not say that when you're out there. But imagine now that you got the freedom to talk about how wicked this world is. Yeah, yeah that's something to be joyous about. Yeah. How, how godless the leaders are. How godless that sinners are. How godless even churches are. Churches, churches. Because you can't dare say what's wrong about the Christian churches nowadays. Why? Because we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. So I know that the guy is teaching what you call heresy here, but you know, his ministry is up about love and encouraging people. It's not like hell. And thank God you can just talk, you can just talk freely that, man, I'm sick and tired of that. Don't you agree? Yes, I agree. Amen. And man, isn't that wonderful? Thank God for the joy where not only you can uh, talk trash about what's going on with the wrong churches, but trash about yourself. 
where you can hear preaching of the Word of God, that you can hear that you're garbage, you're trash, and that I want to plead the blood of Jesus Christ to wash away my sins. I need to be reminded that I'm trash. I need to be reminded of who I am so that I can uh, get some things right with the Lord. Isn't it awesome? I mean, imagine, I mean, this is unthinkable, being in a church where all you heard was bad about yourself and you come back home motivated. Come back home happy. Man, what a church, nothing like it. Preaching of the Word of God where you, you don't have to hear these uh, translations talking about you, you, and you. You know, the these and the thous finally come out and it's like authority speaks to you. Thank God for preaching out of a King James Bible, that authority that speaks to you and you hear authority, you apply authority, you take in authority and you go back home with authority on your life. What joy and bless God. Better yet, better than all of that, praise God, after all of that is over and you're flooding with joy, let's eat. <laughs> what joy, hallelujah, that you can talk to your brother and sister in Christ and then just talk about trash about yourself, trash about the wickedness of the world, trash about the false churches out there, and then just to brag about Jesus Christ, brag about the goodness of God, brag about your brothers and sisters in Christ, God's goodness on your life. And then, man, what, what joy, joy. And then after that, you go back home, and then there's joy, and praise the Lord that, wow, I don't have to wait a long time. I got the middle of a week to play catch up and to retain the joy. I got joy, there are, this can carry on, every Sunday. Praise the Lord, oh, what joy! Because I'm in a Bible-believing church, a Bible-believing world, Bible-believing brothers and sisters in Christ. Oh man, what joy! Thank God! We, we don't want this to leave us. We don't want this to lack. Because something that we got. So then why are you miserable? Okay. Come on. Good question. Why do you feel down today? Yeah, good. There it is. Let's, let's be real here, all right? I know, you got the joy flooding. That's awesome. But let's be real. You're joyous now, but, you know, when you go back to real life, you're not as joyous, are you? Come on, let's be real here. It's not like the love of Jesus Christ is something wonderful when you go back to that godless environment again. When you're 24-7 by yourself. And then when you've failed God again and you skipped your Bible reading and your prayer and then because of that lack of spiritual sustenance you got no joy in you and then you face the world you face temptation you face hardship by yourself by yourself because you left out church you left out Bible reading you left out prayer and then the love and the joy you had with brothers and sisters in Christ now turned to fear turned to guilt it turned to criticism over yourself. And you're like, man, I got to, man, what's the matter with me? You know, brother and sister, so-and-so, they say they love me, they pray for me, but, you know, they're thinking that I'm backslidden. Okay. You know what, they're probably thinking of me as, you know, I'm not that spiritual. They, prob they probably know, they probably know the sin in my life that I'm going through. And then that's why when you go back home, you struggle with the same sin problem. I mean, it's not just skipping out spiritual duty. You've got some bad things in your life you're still struggling with that you're hiding. And then now you have no joy, no peace. I mean, uh, how, how can you end up like that? Because something lacked. Something lacked. When you lack something, nothing can sustain the joy. You want to keep the joy? You got to keep sustaining it. But what lacked that caused you to end up in this miserable state? You don't end up misery just like that. You can't blame incidents or situations in your life that made you that way. You can't just blame all of that. Something actually happened because the joy was flooding in your soul. You got the joy of the Lord. You're thanking God and you're shouting. But if you have that, nothing should interfere with that. Nothing should be able to steal that from you. Jesus Christ said, I make your joy full and no man can take it away from you. Amen. So if you have that fullness of joy, you should be able to withstand misery, depression, loneliness, and problems. Okay. So why are you not then? 
why are you not able? That means that fullness of joy is not there. The fullness of joy, it's a half joy. And that's the reason why you're half joyous and half miserable, aren't you? Is that what you are right now? Why? Because something that lacked. Will you pray with me? Father God, fill within me the power of your Holy Spirit and the cleansing of your blood to preach your word. Lord, I lack. Oh God, I desperately lack without you. And I come before you in fear and trembling to preach. Will you fill me with your Holy Spirit? Cleanse away my sins with your blood. Will you use me again like you've faithfully done, Lord? And Lord, may the people get something where they will not lack. They will feel sustained. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As I preach, um, if you would please uh, make sure that uh, I am all for the amens, the shout, and the zeal, but if you would keep it low so that there won't be any distraction when I preach the word of God, and then that word of God can sustain and feed you. But please do not lose the shout and amen as well. We need that spirit to keep the preaching going. Amen? All right, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, and then notice right here we got the joy at verse 9. Because of that joy, when you look at that very next verse, that's why Paul said that's why we want to perfect that which lacked. Why? Because he doesn't want to lose that joy. That joy which could be lacking, and they could lose their power in the Lord, he wants to make sure that that will stay sustained. That's the reason why that's the reason why you're miserable and sad is because there's something in there, in that Bible-believing church and Bible-believing ministry God has given to you to sustain your joy that's lacking. Paul's concerned about that. In the church of Thessalonica, they got the joy. They got the realness. But are they lacking something in there? And if it's lacking... I want to keep that joy. I want to protect that joy so that I can keep the shout for God. So is there something lacking in this church, joy? You thought about that? Is there something that's lacking? A lot of people don't think about that. A lot of people, when they come to church, they just take it in rather than give. They take it in rather than give. And because of that, it's going to keep on lacking. You know, things do lack when you keep receiving. When you keep receiving, that sustenance level is being used. And when that sustenance level is being used, that means it'll lack. So it needs an increase so that it can keep feeding you. You can keep using it. If we were to think about what lacked, is there something in the music ministry that's lacking. We got four instrument players today, but sickness does happen. Vacations do happen. Inevitable things happen where people can't be there. Will we still have the same joy in the music or will it lack? Okay. Will it lack? Somebody needs to step up for Jesus Christ and then add another instrument player then. Bass, drum, you know. We have one. What if it turns out none? What if it turns out none? Amen, brother. Amen. You need to fill up that which lacked. <laughs> you need to get trained there. <laughs> <laughs> but if we were to think about it now, if we are to think seriously about it, what about church? Attendance, you might not think is a big deal, but you waking up in the morning, coming here, makes a huge difference. Why? Because so many lack today with things that happen. You made up that which lacked. Now, isn't it make, it doesn't it make a full difference when you get a full house? That's right. It makes a big difference when the room over there in fellowship is full and not so many seats in between you. Right. It makes a huge difference. Why? See what lacked. Right. And then... Perhaps someone needs to step up in attending church. Perhaps someone needs to be a little bit more selfish and say, I just want to eat food. Okay. Fill up that which lacked. Fill, fill up that which lacked in technology. You know, this, they, that, that ministry, you have to give kudos to them. That is a pain in the neck what they're doing. 
You have to give uh, kudos to the one who has to take care of the money, all that numbers thing. Ridiculous, man. Today, we lack a lot now. Who can step up? We're lacking those, not just church attendance, but even fellowship. Well, fellowship is just a good time and that's an option. No, every month, why is it set up? Why is it deliberately intended in there? Because it makes a huge difference when you're able to talk freely with your brother and sister yes, in Christ yes, and share memories yes, and be able to use those memories to keep you going. Make you bond more with your family so you can separate and distance the bonds more with your worldly loved ones and families there. See, fellowship makes a big difference. So why isn't there a lot of people who want to go to the trip at Pastor Hilton Smith's church? Why aren't there people who would want to come to the weekend revival? Why won't people want to come to somebody's house on a weekend and just be there and fellowship with each other? Is that which lack? Do we lack something in the children's ministry, the teens ministry? And you wonder why they keep messing up in the world? They don't have a good environment, do they? They don't have enough teachers, do they? They don't have enough sustenance, the right teaching, the right preaching that will aim their hearts and protect them from the wicked world, do they? They don't have other kids, do they? Yes, your kid makes a huge difference. It gives that person a friend. It gives that person someone to look up to and serve God. Amen. It makes a huge difference with friends, the person sitting next to you. Person of your gender, a person of your culture here, person of your age makes a difference. It fills up that which lacks. You feel like you can relate to someone. You can talk. Do we see these things that lack? We don't, do we? And that's the reason why the Bible says right here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, and then verse 9, uh, verse 10, verse 10, night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking. You won't be able to fill up that which lack until you see something first. You know why a lot of churches can die out? And Bible believers can die out because they don't watch and pray. And the devil sends in temptations and then things happen, busyness happens, health problems happen, and then life, just life itself happens and it can take away that which can fill and it turns into lack. Do you see these things? Well, you know, I don't have to worry about that because brother and sister, in, my brother and sister in Christ will fill up that which lack. They're not there. Then who's going to fill up that which lack? Well, as long as the pastor's here, he'll fill up that which lack. Yeah, but then what if the pastor won't be here eventually? Do you know how many times I thought about not being here to stop? Why? Because I'm human like you. What you're feeling, what you're struggling, you better bet it, I've shared, or I am feeling some things too. So then, through these times that we go through, who can fill up that which lacks well then uh, as long as I see a volunteer sheet or pastor asks me or some brother and sister in Christ asks me then I can know no uh, quite often what will make it a good church is that the brother and sister in Christ himself or herself sees that which is lack that the pastor sometimes does not see and then if the brother and sister in Christ said hey, hey pastor you don't have to do that let me do that for you Hey, I, I, I'll set up everything right here. You don't have to set up a single thing right there. Here's the whiteboard right over here as well. Here's the markers that are out. It's right here. All you have to do is just go over there and draw. You have to see that which lack is, okay, I got a good stuff going on for kids, but, you know, I want to protect them from that wicked world. You know, they need more fellowship with each other. I can see that. They're, they're bored with church or they're struggling to hear the teaching. There's something there. I want to do better. Maybe I need to talk to pastor and learn. Maybe I need to buy this book from a Bible believer on how to take care of the kids. We got those books here in our library. You know, praise the Lord. People are cleaning and stuff like that, but there's a certain day no one's cleaning. There's a certain area in the room nobody thought about cleaning. When I, why don't I go over there at that corner where all those cobwebs are Amen. that no one caught, that pastor didn't catch? He doesn't have to ask me. He doesn't have to tell me. I'll clean it up myself. 
You know what makes a great church? Somebody puts in his or her idea, see that which lacks, and then comes over there and fills in the gap. That's what makes a great church. What makes a great church is no one has to tell the person to say hi. No one has to tell the person to come out to church. No one has to tell the person to go out soul win. No one has to tell the person to pray for him or her or encourage or fellowship with that brother and sister. It's when you see that yourself and you fill in the gap and say, let me do that for you. And then the person all of a sudden when they walk inside the church, they think that they walked into heaven itself. Why? Because people see that which lacked. Do you see that? Do you see that which lack? The Bible says if you want to fill in what lacks, you can't have someone tell you what part that lacked. You need to see it. You need to see it. You need to see it. It's not just a church, though, I wonder. Perhaps the church fills up everything in the gaps. Perhaps you got the joy. Perhaps you got the sustenance. Perhaps nothing is lacking. Okay, then why are you still miserable? Then my question to you is, why are you still struggling? My question is, why do you feel like there are some missing pieces or certain holes? Why is that? Because perhaps there is something that really lacks in this ministry and church. Or it's not this church. It's you. Because you get your joy, you get your sustenance over here. But then when you're by yourself serving God, the joy is zapped. It's zapped. Why? Because that's the part that lacks, is your own personal walk with Jesus Christ. You know, when you look at that verse again, Paul, he, he's not talking about just his church to fill up the gap, to fill in the missing place that lacks. He says at verse 10 again, and might perfect that which is lacking in what? Your, your, your faith. It's personal to you. And how can you think that you can maintain the joy of the Lord in church, fired up for the Lord, and go back home and skip your Bible reading and prayer again? How can you think that you can maintain the joy of the Lord when you go back home and that ungodliness is spreading out in the workplace, in your neighborhood, and yes, even in your own home? Because you didn't fill up that which lacked. You didn't fill up that which lacked. How can you still have family problems? You know why. There's something that lacked there. One of them is not saved. Some of them don't know Bible-believing truth like you do. Worse, they're influencing you. And then you get sucked on up with them. Even worse, even worse, you think you're the one that's spiritual and you're so blinded that you're enforcing your spiritual standards to do uh, what you think is right, but then you're blinded by pride and conceit and you didn't realize all that time you're in the wrong. That's even more dangerous. You know what I learned as a pastor is that I can know all the scripture that I want, but if I don't guard my heart or look at my heart, I can enforce my own spiritual things upon my house and realize that I was in the wrong all that time because I didn't see a pride there. I had a misunderstanding right there. I had a little bit of uh, accusation right there. I had a quick presumption right there. I had even my own hidden fleshly tendencies that controlled my spiritual decisions in my home. Was that too deep for you, or do you understand what I'm talking about? Perhaps that was a little deep, and you don't see that. But a lot of times, if you're not careful, when you start to do spiritual things for the Lord, you have, you, if you don't guard your heart, you might, it might be your flesh that's doing that. You have to guard that. You have to guard that. Do you perfect that which lacked? If something is lacking in your life, in your home, in your workplace, in all that, are you just going to sit down and do nothing about it and just go through the day? Or are you going to fill up that which lacked? Make up for the ungodliness then. Why don't you have a Bible in front of you when you're working? Make up for the uh, mess that's going on in the home. Why don't you put extra effort in your testimony, in your prayer life for them? 
Make up for that which lacked in your personal life if you're struggling with a certain temptation or sin or you're neglecting your relationship with Jesus Christ. Start to finally put your own rules have the guts and have the courage to put your own rules and boundaries in your life or things that can enforce that, keep you away from that. Some of you have to give up things even though you paid a lot of money for it. Some of you might have to move. Some of you might have to switch jobs or switch life or you might have to give up some friends and put some distance there with the wrong influence and wrong loved ones. You're going to have to put a boundary protection you're going to have to fill up that which lacked. You doing that? Or you're just sitting there and just going through life like you're doing now. And let that which is perfect come to you to fill up that which lacked rather than you yourself trying to fill it out. Well, you're a bunch of Calvinists. You're going to let God just keep doing this to you? You got to do something about it yourself. So, why are you sad? Why are you down? Why are you still struggling with old habits even if you're doing so well, right? Do you perfect that which is lacking in your, your, personally you, your faith? You know, the verse says right here at verse 10, night and day praying exceedingly so that they can perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Notice in verse 11, God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. Yeah. You really need that. You need God's intervention. You need God's direction. You and I can agree with that because most of the time we don't do it ourselves. We don't make a difference ourselves. We're just passive, doing nothing, and if it wasn't for the grace of God, you probably would have been outside on the streets like a lot of people in San Francisco shooting drugs right now and having no roof over your head. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Had it not been for the grace of God. So you need God's direction and His grace to keep you in the straight and narrow and to make sure you keep living that life that would be perfect, that would please Him. Why would Paul say, may God direct you? Because you need him. Wow. You, de you definitely need him. Because you know where you would be without him. And most of the time, you don't, like I said before, you're not doing anything about it yourself. You're just passive, sitting down, expecting someone to fill in that which is perfect in your life. So since most of the time you're doing that, you might as well be more desperate that I need you, God, to save me from the poor, stupid decisions that I still make in my life. Amen. Yeah, you need God. Now, do some of you understand what that means, why you need God? Why do you need him? Well, it's simple, Pastor, because of all the messed up things I can end up in. Good point. So does that mean then, listen, does that mean things can happen in your life after this that can subtract and make you lack in your joy? Duh, right? We all agree. All right, then why don't you think about that? Why don't you, like that verse says, pray night and day over that? Like that verse says, I need God to direct. Why? Because that means there can be hindrances or interferences as you keep living your joyous life in the Lord. Don't think that as you sing and shout and have the joy of the Lord that nothing's going to stop or interrupt this. Don't think that because you got uh, a pretty much a good size for a lot of people missing that the next Sunday it's going to be like this. Don't think that after this that the devil won't attack you in your finances, in your health, in your family, or in your work life, or even just your mental condition. And don't think that the devil or the world or the flesh won't send anything along your way because you got the joy of the Lord. So you know what we ought to do? Why aren't we praying, God, protect our people, protect our church? I plead the blood. Why don't we look ahead and see, look, this is possible. Even though it's a good day, praise the Lord, next Sunday may not be as blessed. So I need to be ready to watch my health, look at my schedule, build up my determination, and 
Make sure nothing will stop me from coming to church that day and keep filling up that which lacks. Why don't you do that? Why do you, don't you think about future? A lot of people don't think about the future. You have to look at the future of this church and just because you got the joy of the Lord in Sunday school class for kids and then the teens ministry and then ladies Zoom and then you got Sunday preaching and you got what you've got right now, don't think that it can be gone the next day. Half of the power can be cut off like that the next church service. So you have to prepare your family for church. You have to prepare yourself for the ministry. You have to guard your relationship with Jesus Christ and make sure, hey, I know that those things out there are going to interfere. Stop me from my relationship with God. I got to watch that. And I need to pray night and day. I need to pray night and day for God's grace and for my brothers and sisters in Christ. And make sure those interferences don't come into the scene. How well are you doing? See, if you're passive and you don't look ahead at these interferences that can happen, no wonder a lot of these interferences happen in your life, preventing you from serving God as much as you want to. Why? You never thought about those interferences. You need to guard that. You need to prepare for that. You need to say, okay, these things are going to happen, and when they come, I'll be ready, and I'm going to get, make sure I'm going to keep serving God. You know why you're lacking? Why your joy constantly lacks all the time? You didn't prepare for those interferences that will come. If you prepared ahead for those interferences and make sure that you push those interferences away, if you did that ahead of time, if you prayed up, if you were spirited up, and if you were watchful, then those things would have just bounced back off of you and you would have, nothing would have stopped you from your relationship and pressing onward for Jesus Christ. Yeah, you look at those things, oh man, splits do happen in church. Uncomfortable tensions do happen in church. Problems do happen in your perfect home. No matter how spiritual you think you are, they will happen, they do happen, because the Bible says everyone goes through temptation. There hath no temptation taken you. Right. So are you prepared for those things? Why do you think some ministers, some missionaries quit on the ministry? They don't think about these interferences that can happen, right? They don't think about that. They heard about it and they, they thought they were prepared, but when it actually happened, why weren't they really prepared then? See, we have to think spiritually that this is the devil's world and terrain and we must be ready. Then you'll keep filling up that which lacks. The verse says right here at verse 12, and the Lord make you to increase and in abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. What a selfish thing for Paul to say. <laughs> I mean, for Paul, who already had the joy of the Lord and the blessings of God, and his church already got it, Paul is not content, and he said, I want it to increase. I want it to grow bigger. Don't get me wrong, as Bible-believing pastors, the Lord taught me a long time ago, and I've been through those small sizes, uh, those things that I had to be content and be thankful for what I got. I was prepared to die with only two people in my church for the Lord. I made a determination to stay faithful no matter the size and no matter uh, how little God gives to me. So I'm all for that. But what we don't understand is that there's also another danger out there on the other extreme that God does want you to be, uh, God does want you to be faithful with the little things but how can he give you the bigger things if you never want it to begin with? You know, God doesn't give everybody little things and that's the end of life, that's it. He gives little things and a little, a little less than a little bigger, little bigger, bigger, and big things. And that's why you're not doing big things for the Lord because some of you are just stuck in contentment. I will die this way. Because this is Laodicea and we're all going to die. The world can die in Laodicea. That doesn't have to be you. Amen. That doesn't have to be you. 
Why is increase important? Because the greater strength is the lacking, not the increase. The greater reality is the lacking, not the increase. So think about it. Here you are with the joy of the Lord and the fruits that God has given to you. It's going to be minus because trials happen, temptation happen. Real life happens. People move out. People are too busy. I get older. My, I got a health problem. Storms in life happen. Things do happen. So lacking will be the greater reality. So if it lacks, what are you going to do? Stay content like this or you're going to keep increasing so that it can make up for that which lacked. Yeah, that's good. You know why you need to increase? I'll tell you why you need to increase. The evidence is today. Notice that because there were more new people here today, because we had that increase before, when the devil attacked, when real life happened, when busyness happened, when health problems happened and sickness started to spread, it made up that which lacked in this room today. Who knows, I'd probably be preaching at five people today. Why? Because of the increase. That's why you need to increase. Why? Because you will lack guarantee. Guarantee. So you need to increase to make up that which lack. Think about this. Didn't you know, if some of you were to think about it, if you look at the brothers and sisters in Christ in this room right now, today, after, praise the Lord, I think, 13 to 14 years in the ministry here, praise the Lord. That 99% of the people here that you see today, 99% of the people that you see here today are not the ones when I started my ministry. Didn't you know when I start my ministry, you know what the greater percentage was? That which lacked, not that which increased, that which lacked. Think about it. If I thought when I started out my church and then I had these uh, people coming in and then I was thinking right here, okay, this are, these are the people that are faithful and love the Lord and so I, there doesn't have to be an increase. We'll be fine when we keep serving God. Didn't you know I would have ended up with probably just 1% of that today? 99% guarantee of lack for my case. For my ministry. 99% failure. Guarantee. Would you imagine that? But what happened? I ha then I had, to, I had to say, Lord, Lord, will you send in more people? I had to say, Lord, I'm willing to die with one person in church. I had to say, Lord, I surrender to your will, however. I had to make up that which lacked with myself. With full surrender commitment and sacrifice and that will not douse my fire and with that one percent that tire couldn't die it kept going street preaching kept going sunday kept going and by myself at a wednesday night prayer meeting with no one around it kept going it kept going it didn't die it kept going no matter how much the world, the flesh, and the devil, and all the realities of the Bay Area that make church absolutely impossible, let alone a Bible-believing work, I, I, I had to make up that which lacked with patience, prayer, and sacrifice. Amen. Is that out of pride? Am I showing off to you? No, I'm trying to urge you. That's how important you, yourself, yourself, yourself makes a huge difference where this, you can get a result like this perhaps ongoing. Thank God for the 1% who thought that way. If that 1% left, I would have closed. I was determined if that 1% leaves, it's, that's it, it's a closed door. Where would 99% of the people here be? You thought about that? Think about it! 99% of you, where would you be today, right now? Had not the 1% stepped forward and said, here am I, send me. Wow. Said, let's keep it going. Let's fill up that which lack. There was a time I had to do soul winning five times a week by myself. You know that? I had to do college campus street preaching. I had to do the Alcoholics Anonymous in the Salvation Army. I had to go door to door by myself in visitation, street preaching by myself. 
But that kept on going. Soul winning didn't die out. That's why we still get soul saved over here. Why? Because 1% makes up that which lacked. And 1% of the people that I had in church made up that which lacked. And then what do you get? 99% of the fruit and result today. 99% of the fruit and result today. We are not a mega church. We're not a big church. But look at how God blessed us today. The number of preachers, the number of souls saved, the number of people who are on fire, the hymn singing, the preaching, and then even affecting and helping other churches around the world. How did that happen? Not because we're a great church, because we're not. And because we've seen it when we traveled in other churches, there are better churches out there than us, better Bible-believing churches than us. But how did we ever get blessed with this kind of fruit, at least this level? Because 1% makes a difference to increase, make up that which lacked. And then thank God that the other 99%, see that? The other 99% who visited the church said, you know, small size don't bother me. I'll keep going. The 99% said, I don't care if there's no program for my family, for my kids, or for myself, you know, some special ministering needs. I'm going to keep coming. Thank God for the 99% that said, yes, I will play an instrument. For the 99% who said, yes, I will preach when you're absent. For the 99% who said, I will teach the kids. I will minister to the women. Thank God for the 99% that said, I will lead singing. Thank God for the 99% that said, I will still come to church. I will come to fellowship. Why? Increase makes up that which lacks. When you drop to 1%, that 1% needs to make up that which lacks. And when you get 99%, they need to make up that which lacks for 1%. I would have died 1% had not the 99% stepped up. So are you content with just yourself in church? What about your family? What about your loved ones and neighbors out there? You content with uh, soul winners who were able to bring a lot of souls to the Lord? Why not you? You content with, we got enough music, we got enough uh, preaching, we got enough teaching, and we got enough fellowship, and is that what you're going to think? Or you're going to increase it? Increase it. Increase it. You're content with your rate of attendance? Increase it. You're content with by yourself with your personal walk with Jesus Christ? Increase it. Why? Because something that which will lack is guaranteed 99% of the time to happen. So increase it. That way when the devil and the world and the flesh starts bombarding you and you had the worst day of your life because you're used to increasing, at least you get a bigger percentage of fruits you can carry with you. Increase, increase. In verse 13, to the end he may... Establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. That verse says that our service for the Lord and our joy and what we got, what God blessed us, praise the Lord that we can enjoy it now. Praise the Lord what he's given to us. But remember this. Your life has not ended, and you, some of you still got 10 more years, 20 more years, 30 more years, 40 more years, God knows how many more years left, to serve Him. You got till the rapture, and that's, that could be a very long time. In that much amount of time, can your joy keep continuing? When we look at the false churches out here, it makes us more grateful for what we got, right? I mean, it just makes us so happy and you're just so thankful today you're in this church, not that church. That you're in this church and not that church where they're hearing wrong doctrine and a wrong translation and they have no zeal, no spirit of the Lord and they're all just dead and they're compromising with liberalism and it just grieves their Holy Spirit. Thank God you're not listening to that today. Thank God you're not fellowshipping around that today. Thank God you're just not around that today. And that you're here and you're getting spirit filling. And man, you feel fed today. You're getting God's word today. Aren't you so glad? But we don't think about 
that next Sunday, next Sunday, we could be just like that church over there. Okay. Next Sunday, it could happen. Because real life happens of lacking. So-and-so says, I can't come. So-and-so says, I can't do this. So-and-so says, this real life situation happened. Health, busyness, blah, 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 blah. Those things happen, and it made them lack. See, they didn't prepare ahead. They didn't prepare ahead that, okay, because health problems happen to me, I need to prepare myself, and I need to rest. I need to be patient, and I need to make sure I heal. That way, I can make up that which lacks. And they just go on wise and push themselves and they wonder why they're not filling up that which lack. You know why? They didn't guard their health. There are people who just let busyness happen in the workplace or with their schoolwork and they're like, it is what it is. And I try as I might and I can't make time for church and they don't take time for extra prayer, extra life changes. What can I do to manage this so I can get to the ministry and manage my busyness? They don't do all that. They don't prepare ahead of time. And because of that, it's situations like that that can turn this church into that church the next Sunday. And singing is not as heartfelt, right, right. compared to the last Sunday. And then the preaching is not as heartfelt like the last Sunday because pastor also got discouraged too mm -hmm. and weighed down. Fellowship is not as heartfelt just like the last Sunday. Why? Because there's just so many people not there. Too many gaps. Too many holes. We don't think about that we will become that church next month. The rapture could be all the way here. And you got many years to live. Wow. See? Think about that. Yeah, come on. There's plenty of time for you to easily become that church. Easily. Easily. There's plenty of time for the devil to work with. All he needs is time. And that's like the mother ingredient where he gets this person who's all fired up, joyous in the Lord, to be no different from the lost world out there that the lost world can't tell the difference with a lost person and a saved person when they compare you with the lost world. Why? There's plenty of time for the devil to work with. You don't think that we're going to become that church next year. You don't think that we're going to become that church the next 10 years. You don't think that we're going to become worse than that church the next 12 years because pastor said, I quit. Member so-and-so said, I quit. The other member said, I quit. Teacher so-and-so said, I quit, I quit, I quit. Sad when you look at those dead churches, huh? Do you remember? Can you picture that? Don't you see it? When you go to that church, all of them are just filled with worldly mindedness and there's nothing spiritual. You get in that church. And the singing is so good and you just want to put your heart into it, but the people are just dry and it's just like a dead ritual. Where a pastor, when he's preaching, he's getting onto something good and then he backs off and then softens and tones it down and then you're like, what's the matter with you? A dead church where people, you want to talk about Jesus and then what God did for you and all they want to talk about is the world? Do you picture that church? Do you love that church? How sad, how tragic. It's not real. Might as well go out and shoot drugs. Might as well find something real if I can't find it in church. Might as well go back home, watch TV, play video games, mess up in sin, go out into the world, hang out with my worldly neighbors and friends because they make up that which lack because the church can't do that for me. And when you do that, you're that one who one day is miserable, sad, in bed, doing nothing, feel like you haven't accomplished a thing for Jesus Christ. Why? Because it's a long time till the rapture and you didn't realize that could be you like that. Yeah. You're fired up now, but, as, but just like that, you can turn your day into night. Your love for Jesus can cool. Do you think about that? This is life because you got a long life. So it can go like that, you switch. You're going to be, you're fired up. You love the Lord. You're King James only, Bible-believing, dispensationalist. You have your amens. And you'll serve God. You stay away from the world. 
but like, and you're cussing like they are. You enjoy the worldly things okay. like they are. Okay. And you don't have something real like they are, and you can only find realness in temporary fleshly pleasures that bring only more death. Is that how you feel now? Yeah, you know why? You didn't think that you would go like, You wonder how people end up like that? Revelation chapter 3, it says, the dead church. Okay, a lukewarm church. Laodicea, very lukewarm. And that's the day and age we live in. But you know how they end up like that? They become worldly minded. They're a worldly church. Because they said, I am rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. So the thing is, they feel like they have no need for this spiritual environment. But because all their needs are being fed by the world, by the flesh. But, thank God for but God, right? Yeah, thank God, but God. Thank God for but my God. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory, in glory by Christ Jesus. Thank God that God knows what parts you lack and that he promised he will supply all your needs. He will supply all the spiritual sustenance. He will do that for your life. He will provide it. Well, it's... Uh, you really sure, Pastor, he'll provide it more than what you can think of, brother and sister in Christ. The Bible says supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Thank God that there's a time when I felt like, man, I, God, I need you. God, I'm going through a storm. And then God just opened one of those little bank accounts in heaven yeah. and then just send down that spiritual money to you. And then he just gave you manna and then it just fed you. And it gave you just the right sustenance to keep going through the next day. And then all of a sudden, there were times in your life that the sustenance when he provided your need was more than what you can handle. And you're, Lord, you're like, Lord, this is too much. Would you lessen it a bit? <laughs> Would you lessen it a bit? This is way too much. You're way too good for me. Raise the Lord. And during those times where you lack the need, where you lack the supply, prayer always filled it in. His presence always filled it in. His grace to carry you through always filled it in. At a time where you lacked, he filled it up. He filled it up with his grace to make you survive. At times when you had a good time, the Lord just kept feeding you riches and you felt rich. At time when you're in your highest mode, God gave you way more than you can handle that you wanted to take some away and just give it to somebody else instead. That's my God shall supply all your needs. Why? He can't supply unless they have a need. My God shall supply. You want his sustenance? You want his supplication? I need it, God. But lay out to say, I see you. See, I have no need. You know why? You don't fill up that which lack. You don't see a need. You don't feel like there's a need here. You don't see and feel like there's a need in your life with those holes. It's okay to leave it alone and just go through life. Yeah, that's your problem. You don't need it, so God won't supply it to you. Brother and sister in Christ, look at that bank account in heaven. Look at God's sustenance. you got a God that fills up heaven and earth. And he's just waiting, just waiting for that one time, that one time, just that one time that you will humble yourself, fall on your knees, and realize, God, I need you. I see that which lack. I need you. I need you. I need you to fill in that hole. I need you to fill in my life. Yes, I need you. A person with a desperate need will do anything to fill up that which lack. Lord, let me put an extra effort here. Lord, let me prepare for spiritual warfare here. Lord, let me do something about it here. Lord, no longer will I be passive because I don't need you. I need you. Help. Do whatever it takes to fill up that which lack. And will you supply it for me? You want God to richly supply you? Richly supply you? 
fill up that which is lacking, no hole, and you can go home with, with what I mentioned at the beginning, that joy, that joy. Remember that joy again, that joy in the Lord, that joy against sin, that joy in victory, that joy of the filling of the Spirit, that joy with brothers and sisters in Christ, that joy in hymn singing, that joy in Bible reading, that joy in relationship with God, that joy to trust and obey through the storms of life, that joy and oh to joy if you say, God, I need that. Amen. Tell him. Amen. He will not give it if you don't need it. You need it? Let him open the bank account now on this altar. Every head bow and every eye shut.